the key issue to my mind is that um, particularly the 90s, um, 80s and 90s, uh, just when Indian economic growth picked up uh, from the old 3% growth rate to 5.5% um, in the 80s and something like 6, 6.5% in the 90s, and of course it's picked up further to nearer 8% in the 2000s. Um, normally when that kind of economic growth acceleration takes place, uh, you also have urban uh, growth acceleration. And the opposite has happened in India. So what I take from that, there must be something missing or something wrong in our cities, in the way we have uh, structured our cities, in the kind of employment opportunities appearing in cities, that uh, urbanization has not uh, expanded. And that's, a, uh, that's, that's an issue of great importance uh, because um, if we want uh, rural productivity to increase, if we want average rural incomes to go up, then in fact, people have to be shifted. Oh, I shouldn't say have to be shifted. People have to shift uh, from rural to urban pursuits. The key difference between most of the Asian countries and Asian cities is the lack of growth in uh, manufacturing, even in the value added growth is uh, lower than service sector growth, which is very unusual. Um, and uh, em manufacturing employment growth uh, is even worse. In fact, there's very little manufacturing employment growth in the last 30 years. And to my mind, that's among the key reasons for the slower urbanization. And therefore, uh, I'm glad to see that the government is now coming out with uh, some kind of national manufacturing policy. Uh, but as part of that policy, they have, there, must, there has to be, or there ought to be, a very explicit recognition that uh, we need to take account and we need to take advantage um, of all the benefits that come from being in cities in terms of agglomeration economies, etc. We need to have a really a strong policy for encouraging industry to come up in cities and of course taking care of all the environmental issues, etc. I think one of the encouraging things now is that there is greater interest in this issue. So you have two recent reports, one by McKinsey and the other by the High Powered Committee uh, on uh, Urban Infrastructure, um, led by Dr. Mrs. Uh, Ishara Walia. And both of them have come up with uh, different estimates uh, for the kind of infrastructure investment needed. One striking thing in both reports is that uh, uh, almost just about only 10% or thereabouts of the total investment that they have estimated uh, that is needed, um, you, can cover, you, can, you can cover all requirements for 24-7 water, sanitation and storage. And uh, to my mind, one of the best things you can do to Indian cities in terms of infrastructure is really to concentrate on that. Um, second, uh, they have made uh, very large uh, estimates on um, transport, urban transport. Um, they look a bit too high to me. And what is also interesting is the huge, dif very large differences between those two reports in terms of the composition of um, uh, urban transport investment. The uh, McKinsey report uh, has estimated a large uh, investment requirement for mass rapid transit. Um, the estimate uh, being done by um, the Arwale report um, is much lower for mass rapid transit and much higher for roads, urban road investment. Um, it, my, the committee that I'm heading now, the National Committee on uh, Transport Development Policy, um, the, the, our work is in process. Um, the indication from the uh, urban transport working group is that their estimate would be, some, would be lower than uh, both of these estimates. One of the key issues really is that um, the way that we structure the governance of our cities, um, you have a reasonably high degree of confusion uh, in the institutional structure. This is not unusual if you look at even many other countries that, uh, this is, uh, that what you do find is a, a whole host of uh, institutions that have something to do with the running of cities from municipal governments to utility providers to development authorities, etc. And we have all of them. Um, I think we do need some better clarity in that. But even more importantly, um, the way things have run over the uh, many years, 50, 60, 100 years even, that um, there's no prestige attached to working either for a municipal government, for a development authority or a local utility. 
and obviously the best minds uh, are not going to these uh, activities. So we really do need to give a lot of thought on how uh, we can attract uh, best minds to uh, running our cities, to planning our cities, to maintaining them, to provide public services and also to convince uh, the analytically minded to do more research uh, on these areas. Um, that people ought to perhaps be excited about the possibility of working in these areas, it's very complex. Um, you have, uh, what in some, in some sense interesting is that you have uh, really uh, now hundreds of institutions that call themselves management institutes in the country. And there are lots of students clamoring to get into these uh, institutions, but you don't have any uh, which really focus on urban management, um, urban financing. Um, urban governance, um, urban transport, and so on. Um, and therefore, looking at this, the, the, the way the supply response has taken place on uh, management institutions, uh, one can imagine that if there was a demand for uh, students to come out of uh, urban management institutions or urban transport institutions, etc., that supply would be forthcoming. Um, and so I think this is a big challenge that we do something so that um, the the, the uh, urban institutions, uh, whether they are municipal governments or development authorities, uh, public utilities, are attractive enough for people to think of joining them f for their careers. I think that the many of us who uh, three years back uh, started thinking of IHS, this was indeed uh, the key issue in our, in our minds that uh, just as the Indian Institutes of Technology, the Indian Institutes of Management, the national law schools uh, were set up and have been very successful in A, attracting uh, the best minds in the country and B, then uh, over a long period of time, like 30, 40 years, that these institutions have been very effective in providing a whole cadre of people uh, who provided uh, management talent, technology talent, uh, law talent now in the last 10 years from the national law schools that if you establish a similar uh, place institution, the Indian Institute of Human Settlements, then hopefully over a period of time uh, we can also uh, be as effective as they have been in A, attracting of the best minds in the country to come into this area and B, then placing them in uh, positions that will ultimately be influential in shaping the course of urbanization and the management of our cities. One way that I look at the interdisciplinarity uh, is that uh, my, own, my own professional development, that uh, after my getting my PhD, um, I worked exclusively uh, for four years on studying one city, and that is the city of Bogota and also uh, also, also city of Cali in Colombia. And um, the, the, because in that city, we uh, looked at all aspects of the city, that is the urban transport uh, arrangements in Bogota, um, the financing of Bogota, the management of Bogota, the urban land uh, policies in Bogota, urban land structure, urban land prices, uh, the structure of the city in terms of densities and the land values. Um, I've already mentioned uh, urban transport. So, um, just in, just because I worked on that particular study, even though within a city, that in fact I got trained um, through the process of doing that research, also urban labor markets, income distribution, uh, poverty distribution across the city, that I got trained in almost all areas. And I then, my, in my later career, I could work on urban in, uh, and on infrastructure as a whole. I worked on macro finance, that is uh, the finance ministry look, looking at the macro issues of the country. That um, so working on a city lends itself to interdisciplinary work because obviously all of these issues are cross cutting, and so in that sense, any institution which uh, would want to educate and train people to understand the process of urbanization, to understand how cities ought to be planned, how they ought to be run, uh, and so on, that uh, it has to be interdisciplinary by definition. If you want exciting work, if you want challenging work, if you want intellectually stimulating work, this is the area that you need to come in, uh, but you have to create those jobs and um, that uh, the way that urbanization is continuing and the greater interest that is being taken by the government uh, through programs like GNURM, etc., 
that the likelihood in fact of uh, spaces opening up for them uh, would, would actually come up quite fast. Um, so I think that I would say, look, you need, if you want an exciting life, this is, where to, this is the area you should come into it.